get that sinking feeling, don't you, if this was happening to you. That is straight unleaded petrol. So I'm acutely aware that the people that are watching this have probably just straight gassed their machine and they want a quick fix. They don't want to be watching a 40 minute video. So that's what I'm going to give you. Clean your machine, get that done first. Take all the plastics, everything off it until you've just got the cylinder and the crankcase. Carby, everything off. That's what I'm gonna do now. I'll bring you back once it's done. So interestingly enough, now that I've got the cylinder head off, I can see that actually the cause of the failing of this machine has nothing to do with a lack of lubrication, actually. I wonder, this is my thought process. So this is, <clears throat> this is called four corner scoring. One, two, three, four. This happens when you start an engine and you don't give it time to warm up or you don't give the piston and cylinder time to expand. You go straight under load and it basically expands into the cylinder and you get uh, all four corners of the piston contacting the cylinder walls. My thought process now has changed slightly. I think this has been building up over time because you can still run an engine with four corner scoring, but it's gonna be unimpressive to say the least. What I think would have happened is the owner had been using it like that and over time this had occurred and then gradually it got worse and worse and worse and then one day he decided that it needed more fuel or maybe it wasn't starting that well so he tipped it out and he put straight gas in there and either it ran for a second or two and died or it didn't run properly and he gave up on it. I don't believe the lack of lubrication was the cause of all this scoring. It's not indicative of it. If it was, it would be all of this piston all the way around would be covered in these vertical score marks. Anyway, we still treat this in the same way. I can see that the ring has been affected, but uh, what we need to do here, firstly, is gently file over all these spots. We're not aiming to remove excessive amounts. We're aiming to just smooth off those high points. After that, really, it's just another place for oil to sit and uh, to help lubricate. But uh, the, the ring here, that is a bit of a concern, but we will see what we can do. Right, let's give that a wash off. Inside here, we have what we call as transfer. Transfer is melted, abraded pieces of aluminium from the piston skirt that have contacted the cylinder wall and gotten stuck on there. Now there are two ways to remove this really is either manual abrasion or with an acid. Just be so careful, you need to be gloved up. You do not want to spill this on your skin. Take yourself a cotton bud, dip it in the acid and dip that onto the cylinder and it will start to fizz. There it is, I can hear it already. Can you see there it's starting to fizz? Uh, where are we? There, it's fizzing. Well, that's essentially breaking down the piston, or the aluminum from the piston. You see it's all fizzing? Yeah, so that's what you do. I might as well carry on now that I've got it here. Just be careful around the ports. Look. It's not going to dissolve your cylinder into absolutely nothing in a matter of seconds, but it will take off the uh, aluminium if you're, you know, the cylinder if you're not careful. So there we go. So I'm just gonna carry on like this, rubbing it in, being careful around the ports. So as you can see, the hydrochloric acid did a fantastic job, and it always does. If I put my finger in there now, it's, it's smooth. There's nothing catching or grabbing like there, it just feels like cylinder. I wouldn't be able to tell there's any marks there. There is still tiny bits of transfer, which I'm gonna now go on, but again, perfectly smooth. Perfectly smooth. It really does do a wonderful job, but you're taking a risk every time you take that bottle cap off because uh, it's, it's some nasty stuff. Anyway, I'm gonna go in with probably 120 grit, finish up with 400 grit, and uh, I'll bring you back. If you have a still Husqvarna, Echo, etc. piece of equipment, those cylinders, or in fact, not even the cylinders, the pistons alone can cost sort of 300 plus Australian dollars. 
In fact, I bought one for an 08F, an old chainsaw. That was 300 and something, 360, just for the piston. That doesn't include the cylinder, that doesn't include anything else, just the uh, piston, not even the bearing. Um, so you can see that a little bit of effort now can really save you a huge amount of money. Now, if it was just a cheap home light, 150 bucks from the shop, is it worth it? No. Um, unless, of course, you are in, so inclined to do this. This is absolutely fine. If this is what you want to do, then it can save you money and uh, you can keep things going. And there's no reason why, once this has all been cleaned out, that it won't be able to run for, as long as you use a good oil mix ratio, it's tuned properly, like any two strokes, it won't run for many years to come. Even with that damage on the piston, even with that damage on the ring, you'll be surprised at how hardy a two-stroke engine is. In fact, any, you know, same with a Briggs four-stroke, they can take a lot of abuse. Um, so don't underestimate it. Be prepared that it's going to take a bit of time and effort to uh, to get it into that condition. Now, the issue with leaving any galling at all, any aluminium transfer, is it will grab that piston again as the piston expands and it will just repeat that whole process again. Take your time now, take an hour to do it, remove all of the transfer so it looks really nice and clean, and then you know that you're not going to have any future problems. So here we have the finished product on the cylinder. I'll show you as much as we can. Focus. A little bit of scratching there on the plating. There's a bit of a chip out the plating there. A bit of scuffing there, but there's no transfer. A bit of chipping on the plating and some scuffing, but if I get to wipe my finger around there, I can't feel anything, it's smooth, so that's fine. Deeper in the ball, there's nothing. So that is saved, there's nothing wrong with that at all. And then the piston, which you've seen already. Uh, as I said, I've removed with some Scotch-Brite the carbonized, carbon, the, the, the varnishized fuel, whatever you want to call it. And again, I'm just rubbing my fingers over here. There's no sharp high points. They're all smooth and low. Always check once you've done that work to the cylinder, and you clean it out, put a bit of acetone on it, some white paper towel, and just make sure that uh, you get any and all dirt out. You don't want any dirt to come off on this paper towel. Keep going until it's clean. There will be at the end because that's where the carbon is, but the rest of it is nice and clean. That's just what we're looking for. Same inside the cylinder now. Give it a nice healthy once over of two stroke oil. Stop. So there we go. That's it. This one's saved. Someone straight gassed it. And also, they didn't let it warm up properly and, and it's got that four corner scoring. So you can save an engine that's been straight gassed, score piston, etc. It does depend, every single time is gonna be slightly different. The condition of everything's gonna be different, but uh, that's what to look out for. That's how to repair it, and it might save you a lot of money in the long run. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.